let's get down to business. Enough of that messing around with pointless snacks. It's time to do something important. So I bring to you an informational segment called, What Does It All Mean? And we'll be exploring Pokemon card tiers. For the sake of this video, I'll be describing tiers that affect the mechanics of the gameplay with the TCG, with a few exceptions, and I won't be diving into the different artistic styles or treatments that the cards are given throughout the course of Pokemon history. Okay, we've seen a lot of cards in our day. I remember collecting from the base set, the fossil set, the team rocket, the gym leaders, all those classics. And through those sets, we were introduced to some different treatments and styles of Pokemon. For instance, you started off, you had, was it a rare hollow? Was it just a rare? Was it, you know, common or uncommon? And that was all the spice you really needed. The more and more we familiarized ourselves with these cards, the more and more we needed to keep us interested. It's gotten to the point now where if you're like me and got back into the hobby in the last couple years, you may have missed a lot. And it can be very confusing hearing people talk about different sets and different cards that came in those sets and understanding contextually where those cards stack up in comparison to the cards you remember as a kid or the cards you're collecting now. Dark Pokemon, Light Pokemon, you got Prime Pokemon, you got Star Pokemon, you got X Pokemon, Level Pokemon, Optimus Prime, Star Belly Sneeches, Sleazy, Slime, Slimy, slippery, nervous, shy, shame, ashamed Pokemon. And the purpose of this video is to make that a little bit more clear. What does it mean? Let's start at the top. Our first new tier of Pokemon card was technically the Shining Pokemon that came out with Neo Destiny and Neo Revelation. This is in 2001 in the English set. And what's going on with the Shining Pokemon is, as you may know from Pokemon Go or the video games, a shiny Pokemon, a shining Pokemon is one that inhabits a different color scheme. We don't know why, it doesn't matter. It's a fun opportunity for the artists to get a little bit weird, a little bit wild. You ever seen a red Gyarados? Well, now you have. So that was a shiny Pokemon or a Shining Pokemon. But in Neo Revelations, the first two that we see are Shining Magikarp and Shining Gyarados. And the one new mechanic that is introduced through these Pokemon is they're not evolution Pokemon. They come in as basics in the card game. Shining Gyarados came in as basic. So that was a pretty big shift in the Pokemon landscape. And not only that, these Shining Pokemon were extremely rare with a pull rate estimated in one in every 300 packs. Maybe they brought that down a bit over time, but upon first release, that's what was reported. The other mechanic change with these Shining cards is you could only have one per deck. Ordinarily, you get four cards of the same name in a deck and they inhabited multiple energy types. So sometimes the, the attacks might cost lightning and fire, fire and water, kooky, wacky stuff, right? So that's the Shining cards. Here's some pictures of notable Shining cards. You got Charizard, you got Gyarados, you got Magikarp, you got Mewtwo. There's probably a couple others. And I assume these were pretty good cards to have in your deck, given you could only have one. The next step comes with Pokemon EX, small e, small x. That becomes important later. These were introduced in June 2003 in the English set, Ruby and Sapphire generation. The main mechanic change with the EX Pokemon was when your Pokemon got knocked out, your opponent takes two prize cards instead of one. On top of that, they all come in at basic. They don't have to do any evolution, which takes turns to evolve your Pokemon. You bring in a hot boy and he's doing hot things right away. Pretty cool. So that was Ruby Sapphire and those Pokemon EX. Then one year later, November 2004 in the English set, we get EX Team Rocket Returns. This is a set also in Ruby Sapphire and they introduce Pokemon Star. And the Star Pokemon are kind of like shiny Pokemon, best I understand, with the alternate color variation. You can only have one per deck similar to the shiny Pokemon. They come in as basic. Some of them are what's called a Delta species, which means it possesses an alternate type 
a type matching its changed color appearance. But very notably, Gyarados, Red Gyarados, Fire Gyarados, Delta Species Gyarados. An amazing card. It's a fire dragon, right? If Charizard wasn't good enough, we got Fire Gyarados. I've always been a little bit more seduced, if you will, by Gyarados than Charizard from an artistic perspective. So that was pretty cool. Those Pokemon Star, they have a star indicator next to their name. And those are very rare, very coveted cards as well. Moving on, our next tier of Pokemon that was introduced level X. This is when Pokemon decided to put a level next to every card. I don't know if this was a good decision because this always felt a little strange to me. Levels are so fluid, right? Your Pokemon are evolving through levels who knows how often. So to have a Pokemon like stuck at a certain level, it seemed almost frozen in time and it created a bunch of warped timelines of Pokemon levels. It just seems strange. Made their appearance in Diamond and Pearl May 2007 in the English edition. Edition. These are Pokemon level up cards, meaning they do have to evolve from their predecessor and they can still use attacks and abilities from those previous evolutions. You get the abilities from that previous Charizard, but now you have the Charizard level X. It has all these other attacks and abilities. Pretty cool, but you do have to evolve it to get that. Other than that, there are no different card, prize card mechanics introduced here. It's mostly just an extra evolutionary step that you get to take to achieve or unlock better attacks and better HP. The other notable thing here is the level X card possesses the same name as the card that it evolves from. So Charizard 79, level 79, Charizard level X. Those are the same card for purposes of building your deck. Next, we get Pokemon Prime. This is kind of an exception because Pokemon Prime behave no differently than a normal card. The card design is just unique. The card is exiting the frame. It has a nice little sparkly border around it and they're very powerful. They're very good. But other than that, no differences. In fact, they don't say prime in their name. It's just you can tell by the art style that it is prime. This is very similar to a type of card that was just recently introduced in Vivid Voltage, which we'll get to later. Foreshadowing. But this came around in Heart Gold, Heart Silver, February 2010 in the English edition. And this was just an opportunity to do something unique artistically and create really powerful cards that would be useful in the meta. So they were rare cards and I assume they were very hard to get and they're still valuable cards, but not necessarily any groundbreaking new mechanical structure introduced with the Pokemon Prime. Next, we have Pokemon EX Biggie, Big X. This came around Feb 2012, Next Destinies in the Black and White series. It was the fourth set. Black and White series starts off a little slow with three sets where they don't really introduce anything new, just the new Pokemon. There's not a lot of super valuable cards in those three sets, I checked. So they, they upped the ante. They gave you us EX cards and in these EX cards, if your opponent knocked it out similar to Little E, Little X, they would get two prize cards instead of just one. They are all basic. Not that much different than Pokemon EX from before, Little E, Little X, but like I said, those cards had probably been phased out and they wanted to bring some new ones in. And they were also building the foundation for another higher tier EX card, which is Mega Evolutions, Mega EX cards. These cards evolve from the Pokemon EX that shares their same name, but they actually are almost a different evolution, if you will, of that Pokemon with the same name. Lucario and Mega Lucario appear differently. They have different physical characteristics, not just coloring, different spikes and stuff coming out of them. This Pokemon had to evolve from the EX card, which ended your turn in the card game as soon as you did it. You did not get to attack. So that was a big limitation to balance out what would be the giant HP and attacking power that came with these mega cards. Also, your opponent takes two prize cards if this mega is knocked out. What we have there is just super strong card, but it does have to evolve from the one before it. Those mega cards did some funky things with the art. They had the Japanese lettering coming through them. They were escaping the frame in a really big, loud way. And then also the full arts are just extra. I don't know how else to put it. Seems like people don't value some of these mega cards as much as I might think they would, seeing as how they haven't made a comeback. And like I said, the state of the mega Pokemon, the physical characteristics are altered, are different. 
Maybe it's because Pokemon doesn't really know when it will be introducing Mega Pokemon back into the, the games and the anime. I don't know, I haven't been following it that closely, but maybe it feels like a deprecated state of Pokemon that we're not returning to. I think the Mega cards are dope for what it's worth. I think those are cards worth hanging on to and collecting and maybe in like a few years, people will look back and be like, we've never really seen art like that and it hasn't come back. So those are really awesome pieces. Moving on, Pokemon Break. This is a bit of a letdown, and I think just a swing and a miss, honestly, from an artistic standpoint and even from a mechanic gameplay standpoint. I don't know for certain on that. I didn't play the game a lot, although I did build decks with EX cards and rarely did I include breaks. It just seemed difficult because the break card had to evolve on top of the Pokemon card that it was sharing the name of. And some of those Pokemon were already stage two Pokemon like Greninja or someone like that. So that seemed hard to me. At the same time, you retain the attacks of the Pokemon below it, similar to the Pokemon level X. There's no other changes to the mechanic. You, your opponent only gets one card for knocking out a Pokemon break. The main thing here is that the art, although at first it feels like, whoa, you just stepped into a diamond mine, becomes extremely bland when you look at all the different cards that share the exact same artistic treatment. And I mean exactly the same. The Pokemon's gold and looks like a gold statue and it's got a shiny holographic geometric diamond background but that's it it's just shiny there's no real detail within the personality or, or expression of the pokemon in my opinion if people love the break cards they're not showing it by the price either because very few of these cards are worth anything and you don't see people running out to get them graded or even trying to sell them that often so break still in the XY set. They may have just felt that the cards were getting stale in that set. They had done a lot of sets, much more than some of the previous generations. And they thought probably, hey, let's introduce something new and fresh and hope to spice it up. And I don't think it worked. I definitely don't think it worked as well as what Sun and Moon ends up doing around the halfway point or a little after the halfway point of that generation's run, which we'll get to in a bit. So next comes Pokemon GX. This is February 2017 in the Sun and Moon base set. Pokemon GX operates very similarly as Pokemon EX with two notable ex exceptions. Your opponent does take two prize cards for knocking out this Pokemon, but the GX Pokemon are not all basic, meaning they must evolve from their pre-evolutions just as any Pokemon would in the card game. And then the other exception is that you get a GX attack with these GX Pokemon that you can only use one of per game. Regardless how many GX Pokemon you have in your deck, you only get to use one GX attack and it is an incredible attack. Some of them are like, make your opponent discard 10 cards. A lot of really awesome attacks like that and they gotta do attacks that I think they'd never be able to introduce otherwise because of energy constraints and because if they create an attack too powerful it would disrupt the game but they were able to introduce some of those attacks within this format so I thought that was cool there's a GX indicator that you put on the board when you've played your GX attack and that lets your opponent know you can't use another one of those these GX cards are tight I think they're some of the coolest arts in the Pokemon card universe because they introduced the original version, the full art version, and the rainbow version. This is where we first see the rainbow secret rares, which look kind of like this. Here's a few different variations. The full art cards look similar, but they have a color background instead of the rainbow background. And then the original art is just a little bit even more detailed and descriptive of what the Pokemon's doing in its environment. All very cool. They did a great job, but it gets even better. In February 2019, not too long ago in the Sun and Moon team up set, they introduce Tag Team GX Pokemon. These are my favorite cards I've seen since I've been collecting the last two years. I think part of it has to do with, and I apologize if I don't get this name right, Mitsuhiro Arita, an artist who's been with Pokemon a very long time. And he designed all the original versions of the Tag Team GX cards. So meaning not the full art, not the secret rare, not the alternate art. He designed all of them. There's a really strong cohesion to the art of the Tag Team cards, which would make an amazing set if somebody is to collect all of those, especially in a highly graded version. I think years down the line, we look back to this tag team set, considering they're all the same artists. They all share this very unique 
character that shows these Pokemon working together and having kind of a cool, I don't know, symbiotic relationship. Snivy and Venusaur, Gengar and Mimikyu, Magikarp and Wailord, some wacky combinations, ones you might not even expect, and the cards do it justice. I think these are amazing. On top of that, they introduce alternate art versions, which are some of the coolest cards in the game. I've talked about this before, but the Magikarp, Wailord, alternate art, the Mimikyu, Gengar, alternate art, Arceus, Dialga, Palkia, the list goes on and on. There's just some phenomenal cards that they were able to create with the alternate art. I'm not sure we've seen designs that rival those since, and I, I'm sure we will, but I, I just think those are in the hall of fame for me personally. The tag team GX cards were insanely powerful. They came in as basic because there's no way to evolve a double Pokemon, sometimes a triple Pokemon from earlier versions of itself. It wouldn't make any sense. So they have to come in as basic. On top of that, they have insane HP, some over 300, really powerful attacks, and they still have the GX attack. So they still get to use one of those potentially unbelievable attacks just one time throughout the course of your game. The offset for this was your opponent gets to take three prize cards if this Pokemon is knocked out. That that means potentially your opponent could knock out two of your tag teams game over. This accelerated the game in a way that I think some players resented because deck building became more limited. There weren't necessarily as many cards that you could creatively include in your deck when there were just these monsters out there that could really control the dynamic of the battle. I'm no expert, so don't take that as gospel just some of what I've heard. This brings us up to the current generation Sword and Shield where we are introduced to Pokemon V and V Max. They were both introduced in the Sword and Shield base set in February 2020 earlier this year. The V cards behave very similarly to GX cards, except they go back to the old EX rules of coming in as basic. They're all basic Pokemon, even if they evolved from another Pokemon. The other thing was there's no GX attack. There's no super power attack that you get to use just one time. It's just this card is worth two prize cards. It's basic. It's very similar to the EX mechanic. In fact, when you learn about VMAX, you learn this almost just feels like a reincarnation of the card's EX, right? Because the VMAX is a card that evolves from the, the V card before it, and it's just more powerful and it has better attacks. Very similar to the Mega EX card, but it doesn't end your turn when you evolve it. The opponent gets three prize cards for for knocking out your VMAX Pokemon. That's the one other difference. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. You can evolve this, it doesn't end your turn, but your opponent gets three prize cards. It also probably has a little bit higher HP, maybe even more attack damage. That's it. They've played around with these different mechanics and you can tell they're just trying to balance it out. They're trying to rein it in. They introduce something, oh, that kind of worked, but then this happened. It's just game theory. Watching how people build decks once they introduce a new mechanic and then pivot and then watch, pivot, watch, pivot, watch, all the way to where we are today. And you're seeing some of the same ideas recycled with a slightly different spin. That brings us to our very last tier of card that we've seen up to date, which is the amazing rare. There isn't really much online on like Bulbapedia, even calling out that an amazing rare is a thing. It just is a thing. Everyone's talking about it on YouTube. An amazing rare is just a normal card given in different artistic treatment. Does that remind you of anything? Yeah, Pokemon Prime cards. Ostensibly nothing is different about them other than we all know that they're super rare, super cool, hard to get, very powerful and useful in the gameplay. So they have reasonable HP, but really, really good attacks. Your opponent only gets one card for knocking it out. It comes into the game like every other card does. It's just cool. It just has a unique art treatment. And I think they're some of the most stunning cards that Pokemon has done, especially in the Sword and Shield set, because my favorite cards are not necessarily the loudest, but the most unique. Sometimes less is more. You know what I'm saying? So I love them. Also, the amazing rares have really unique energy value for the attacks. So some attacks take different energies, energies you wouldn't expect for that particular Pokemon. That I think is to balance out the power of some of those attacks because some of them are just unreal. 
at the current point we are in Pokemon card game, I am interested to just see what they come up with next. These classes, they give you something to follow if you're a collector and not even a card player. And they also explain why certain cards may be valued the way they are. If they had a really significant role in the TCG, that could affect their value later on. People get nostalgic over the things that were important at the time that they were important to them. That sentence seemed like very circular. Anyway, I hope some of that makes sense. This video is a little longer than most, but if you like it, please hit it with a like and subscribe to my channel for more content similar to this. Also, some of it's more gonna be me shoving my face full of snacks. We're gonna accommodate both of those lifestyle movements on this channel. I just wanna know what you guys are into and I'll be back with another video soon. So thanks Bug Brigade for being here and we'll talk to you later. Pull the shiny Charizard, I'm feeling so alive, yeah I am like a legendary flying through the sky, yeah Put you in a binder, you know I can treat you right, yeah, yeah. Sleeves on top of sleeves, great and tense is what I like, yeah I promise this is not a fad, it's so much more than hype, yeah I've been cracking packs since the time that I could write back I was just a kid saving quarters on his nightstand Just to pull another item finder from a light pack Pay the grip, I'ma blow it quick. Uh, pray to Pikachu we hit, or I'll throw a fit. Uh, like the tail and Charizard.